So it's nearly four and a half months since Warlords of Draenor came out. Time really does fly, and I think it's about time that we got Warlords, we got Mists of Pandaria, we stripped them down, we got out the measuring tape, and we see how they compare. Or at least how the first 4.5 months of each expansion compares. This is my early comparison of the two. In an effort to be as objective as possible, let's toss aside the rose-tinted spectacles and try to look through the facts as we see them. Part 1, The Launch So it's undeniable that Warlords of Draenor had a tremendously successful launch. Well, give or take a few days of queue issues, but the numbers really do speak. The game surged up from the mid-7 million subscriber mark all the way up to 10 million, a truly astounding growth for a 10-year-old game. The leveling content was engrossing with some of the best storytelling yet, though perhaps some would argue that there wasn't as much depth as, say, the Mists of Pandaria lore had. I totally get that, and I love me some more lore walker Cho, but as far as I'm concerned, the single just storytelling of Warlords was fantastic. Also, the leveling experience was backed up by eight dungeons, some of which were, well, the best that Blizzard have ever produced in terms of quality and mechanical design. Then we've got the garrison feature. Bearing in mind that we're talking about the launch experience, I'm going to say the garrisons worked out well. Back in beta, I said that garrisons would be great for the first month or two, but would be a real drag after that. And I still think that my initial prediction holds true. Though, for the sake of the launch, we're going to give Warlords of Draenor a few points in the garrison regard. Hopping over to raids, I think the quality of High Mall is just undeniable as an introduction raid. The progression curve felt great, the fights just reinforced key game skills, and the non-linear nature was a breath of fresh air after the linear nature of the Siege of Orgrimmar. Also, the garrison campaign was a pretty nifty thing, though I do think that most of it was kind of pointless medium quality filler, and it really did come as a disappointment after seeing the excellent job that they did with patch 5.1. Moving on to the Apexis stuff, well, I think those missions did suck, and as far as I'm concerned, they did not live up to the vision of being a bunch of essentially miniature, timeless isle-like areas that emphasized freedom. No, I think they were just merely mob grinds that were really uninspired. And moving on to another thing that was just uninspired, the reputations in Warlords of Draenor are, in my opinion, the worst that they have ever made. Maybe some of the vanilla stuff wasn't, wasn't great, I didn't play then, but from TBC onwards, no, I'd say the wild stuff was by far the worst. Really unfortunate, just boring mob grinds. They could do so much more while still offering people a bit of freedom with them. Now, in terms of other things, the number squish and class redesigns, I think, are a bit of a mixed bag, with some classes coming out better than others. And then, of course, we've got Ashran. Oh, Ashran. A series of design miscalculations back in beta that everyone called out, but were just not acted on with enough conviction to properly fix the problem. Then, design issues aside, there were Q problems, which were a complete buzzkill that outright killed the idea of Ashran being a drop-in, drop-out bit of freeform content. Half the selling point was that it wouldn't feel like a battleground, yet the exact opposite came to pass. And in terms of the other, like, little small things, yeah, I think Warlords of Draenor did pretty good. Though I suppose you could dock some points for what they did to professions and stuff like that, but I'd say the overall experience was great at launch, and the initial feeling of progression, while it was perhaps too fast in my opinion, was good and it was decently rewarding. Let's hop over, though, to the Mists of Pandaria front, where, in terms of the launch, things are perhaps a bit less positive, for me at least. While some of the quests were genuinely good, I feel that many were just poorly executed with too many gimmicks, and the weight of the storylines, in my opinion, was a bit lacking. I do, however, think that there is a balance to be struck between the leveling style of Mop and Warlords of Draenor. Personally, I'd actually love to see something similar to the freedom of Northrend, combined with the Warlords of Draenor storytelling for the main storylines, and perhaps a few treasures thrown in for good measure. Moving onwards to dungeons, I think Mop does fall short in comparison to Warlords of Draenor. The Wad ones, in my mind, just have better designed encounters, and it's as simple as that. Mop did have more dungeons, though, so that's definitely a plus. And while I didn't do challenge modes much until a good bit later on, I think they were really, really awesome. Now, the endgame of Mists of Pandaria is a bit odd. At first, the, like, the scenarios were fun for a bit, but after that, I don't think they had much value. Reputations are a tough one to crack for this expansion. 
if you look at it objectively, they were not as, well, super necessary as perhaps people, including myself, thought at the time. A key mistake, I think, was spreading power-related rewards throughout so many different reps and then just lifting the daily quest limit. They socially engineered a situation where people were burning themselves out of, of daily quests and it was unsustainable. Since that perception was a real thing, we do have to dock some points here. As far as the reps themselves go, I actually did really like some of the lore. I thought there were some great nuggets of story spread throughout, especially with things like the end of the Klaxi line really standing out in my mind. Now, on top of that, I do think that the mop raid tier does, it just falls short of high mall at launch. I'll cover BRF in my post-launch part of the video, as it did come out later, but in MSV, the stone guards are pretty terrible, and much of the tier just doesn't stand out to me. That said, I did love Elagon. I thought that was a great fight. Heart of Fear and the Terrence of Eternal Springs did come out a bit quicker than BRF, so I'll cover them here. Uh, screw Heart of Fear. I never want to see it again. I- no, no, it's bad, and, and Wind Shaper, no. I did like the Terrace of Eternal Springs quite a bit, though, although the Shav whatever was just a horrendously boring and uninspired end boss. On the PvP front, we got the Temple Place, which I kind of liked, and then the pretty Shadowpan Arena. Not as big a scope as, say, Ashran, but Q PvP content does seem to be where it's at for the core PvP audience, and this expansion, i.e. Mop, did provide more than Warlords of Draenor has so far in that regard. That said, Mop didn't have a world PvP-like area, and the previous two expansions did. Also, the new race and class were great, with the Monk, in my opinion, being one of the most interesting melee DPS and tanks in the game, though I've got no idea about healing. The talent revamp's another thing, it perhaps had a mixed reception, but I do like it, and I think it was a good decision, though that's maybe a bit of a controversial opinion. Also, pet battles were pretty cool, and I suppose the farm was nice if you're into that sort of thing, and really, in terms of the rest of the content, yeah, it was all good in my book. So as far as the launch goes, Warlords of Draenor is the clear winner for me, and the numbers back that up, though Mop certainly did have its good points. Part 2, the early post-launch experience. Let's cover Warlords of Draenor first. Patch 6.1 added hardly any new content, though the tweaks and additions that it did bring are of course welcome. Blackrock Foundry came out roughly the same time, and is a fantastic raid instance, that, despite having lots of scheduling issues with my guild, I am having a great time in. And that's it for Warlords of Draenor, oddly enough. We don't have any current word in 6.2, though the lore looks great, and I'm sure we'll hear about it quite soon. Mop, though, is an entirely different story. Patch 5.1 added the upgrade system, which, while it had its problems, I suppose it did get people playing the game a little bit more. Also, more importantly, it moved forward the story of the expansion and added some momentum to it, with perhaps one of the best bits of mid-expansion storytelling yet. Seriously, that storyline was so bloody cool. Um, there was also dailies which, I mean, yeah, they got old after a bit, but I suppose it is a bit more raw gameplay, and certainly it's more than what 6.1 provided. Also, 5.1 added the Brawler's Guild, which is easily one of the coolest bits of single-player content in the game, as far as I'm concerned. And finally, the rep problem was somewhat helped by the Grand Commendations. Patch 5.1 came out two months after MOP, while 6.1 came out just over three months after the Warlords launch and had less content than 5.1. Also, Patch 5.2 entered testing, or at least hit the PTR and we got notes, three months after the launch of MOP and came out just five months after the launch of MOP. That was probably too fast, but it is undeniable that there was a lot of content coming out in the early post-launch period of that expansion. Do remember that since that early MOP stuff, the WoW team has doubled in size. Have we really seen the dividends of that in-game? I would argue not. Part 3, The Verdict. And the verdict is simple. Warlords of Draenor had a better launch, while Mists of Pandaria had better post-launch support, at least in the early game. <laughs> 5.4, 14 months. Um, yeah, this really does frustrate me, though, because they should have capitalized on Warlords of Draenor's amazing launch success instead of dropping the ball as they have. Imagine if you could merge the two, have a launch as strong as Warlords of Draenor, and then back that up with the amount of really good quality content that came out after Mists of Pandaria. It really could have grown the game perhaps beyond the 10 million mark, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. 
So, right now, I'm going to call it a draw. In one regard, Mop wins, in the other regard, Warlords of Draenor wins. But let's just say that a lot hangs in the balance of the quality of patch 6.2. It's got a hell of a lot to live up to, because 5.2 was a great patch. Still, if they nail it, perhaps Warlords of Draenor could pull ahead and have the better overall, maybe first six month experience. Anyway, that is it for the video. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, then hey, thumbs down and let me know why. Thank you very much for watching the video, and I will see you next time.